हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू मौलाना आज़ाद नेशनल उर्दू यूनिवर्सिटी दिस इज अतिया नाहिद असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर डिस्टेंस एजुकेशन लेट अस स्टडी अबाउट द लेसन नेकलेस फ्रॉम जनरल इंग्लिश फॉर द स्टूडेंट्स ऑफ बी ए बी कॉम एंड बी एस सी सेकेंड ईयर दिस इज द स्टोरी ऑफ ए यंग एंड ब्यूटिफुल लेडी मैथल डी हु इज बॉर्न इन ए मिडिल क्लास फैमिली बट ड्रीम्स ऑफ द थिंग्स the rich and fashionable people have she is married to mr loizel a clerk in the ministry of public instruction who cannot afford to give her the luxuries and she desires one day he brings an official invitation to a fashionable dance party he thinks mathaldi will be happy but she grumbles she doesn't have suitable clothes or jewelry to wear for the ball he gives her some money to buy a new dress and suggests that she should borrow some ornament from a rich friend madam jenny forestier Mathaldi likes the idea and very next day goes and borrows a beautiful necklace from her friend at the dance party Mathaldi is admired by everyone and many young men who are impressed by her beauty dance with her she enjoys the evening leaves at 4 am the next morning on the way back the loisel are not able to get a cab immediately so they walk part of the distance finally they get an old cab and go home when she reaches home Mathaldi looks at herself in the mirror and discovers that the necklace is missing the couple looks for it everywhere but with no luck finally they realize they will have to replace the necklace and using all their savings and borrowing money on heavy rates of interest they are able to buy a similar necklace for of diamond and return it to a madam forestier life changes completely for methaldi and her husband after that they move into a smaller house and live a frugal life saving as much money as they can to repay their loans After a hard and difficult life of 10 years they pay back all the borrowed money Mathaldi becomes like a common woman with rough hands and untidy hair she wears ordinary clothes and shirts loudly while she works one day Mathaldi meets her friend Jenny who is shocked to see the change in her friend Mathaldi tells her how their life had changed completely because of her Jenny is, is surprised because she had noticed that the necklace Mathaldi gave her back was a real diamond necklace she explained that her own necklace was an artificial one in the first part of the author introduces the main character madam loisel she is a young beautiful girl who he says was by a slip of fate born into the family of a clerk since her father could not afford to give a large dowry she could not get a rich and distinguished husband and has to marry a clerk in the ministry of public instruction She cannot afford to buy expensive clothes and the only ornaments she had were beauty and grace and charm. She also trained herself to behave like the fashionable people using her natural cleverness to imitate their way of speaking and walking. So she was elegant like the rich ladies and in the sense their equal. Mathilde did not like her poverty and felt it was like a disease or illness which troubled her life. The walls of her house looked bare to her. and furniture curtains appeared to be ugly she could not afford to buy expensive painting to decorate the walls nor could she buy the best drapes and chairs any other woman in her social strata would not even have noticed these things but for methaldi they were things that pained her and made her angry she had a small maid servant a little britain peasant who came to help her with the housework but looking at her maid methaldi felt regret that she could not have a chain of servants attending to different small jobs in the house she dreams of large palatial houses with small ante rooms or attached side rooms all with beautiful silk curtains lit with decorative candlesticks she imagined two footmen into uniform dozing in the arm chairs waiting to be called by the lady accompany her when she want in her carriage in her dreams she thought that she had expensive decorative pieces priceless curiosities in small cupboards and perfumed reception rooms where she would meet her close friends she would chat with young men who would visit at 5 o'clock and other women would feel jealous that she was the center of attraction when she had dinner methaldi was unhappy that she has to use the same dining table cloth for the 3 days and have the same ordinary items food like soup her husband appreciated the small things and enjoyed the soup but methaldi would dreams of eating dandy dinners in silver dishes with silk curtains around her and the wall decorated with costly paintings and with gallant 
young men whispering to her while she ate the special items of food. Methali did not have beautiful dress or jewels. She felt she had been made beautiful that she could wear such clothes, ornaments, so she longed to be admired by everyone. She had a rich friend called Jenny, a classmate from the convent school, who had all the things she herself did not have, so she used to go see her but feel sad when she had to invite her home. One evening, Mr. Loisel came home happily holding a large envelope in his hand. It contained an invitation for them to go to the dance or ball at the minister's palace. Mr. Loisel thought his wife would be delighted, but Mithaldi was angry instead. She asked what she would do with it, meaning that she could not attend the party because she didn't have a suitable dress. He asked her how much a new gown would cost, and she replied that it would cost at least 400 francs. Mr. Loisel thought 400 francs was a lot of money for them, but to pacify his wife, he mentally planned to give her money for the ball or the party. He mentally planned to give her money, which he had been saving for himself. He had wanted to buy a gun to go shooting with some of his friends, but he said, very well, I will give you 400 francs and try to have a pretty gown. The day of the ball drew near, but Madame Loisel was still sad and upset. Her husband asked her why she was unhappy though she had brought a new dress. She answered very bitterly that she would rather not go to the dance than go without any jewelry. Her husband suggested that she would have some flowers, but it would make her look poor among the rich women. Finally, Mr. Loisel suggested that she should go ask her rich friend, Madame Forestier, to lend her some of her ornaments. She is quite closer to her. Madame Forestier is likely to give her some jewelry to wear on that day. The idea makes Methaldi very happy and she goes very next day to tell her friend her problem. Mrs. Forestier gives her a large jewel box and asks her to choose what she wants. After looking at different pieces of jewelry, Methaldi decides to borrow a superb diamond necklace which makes her heart throb when she tries it on. She thanks her friend profusely and lives with the treasure. On the night of the dance party, Mr. and Mrs. Loisel go to the minister's palace where everyone admires the beautiful Madame Loisel. All the men looked at her, asked her name, sought to be introduced. The author says and other fashionable men in high position wanted to dance with her. She was almost drunk with pleasure. Forgetful of her real status in life amidst the world of admiration. She felt a sense of triumph. It was like a victory which she had won over the woman. She left the ball about 4 o'clock in the morning. Her husband had been sleeping since midnight in one of the attached rooms with other three men whose wives were enjoying the dance. Mr. Loisel tried to help Methaldi to cover herself with a shawl, but she did not like the ordinary wrap. She refused to cover herself against the cold. The other woman had expensive furs and coats or shawls, so she thought that she would be loved at it. She wore a cheap wrap. Mr. Loisel offered to call a cab, a horse dawn carriage, and asked Methali to wait inside it will come. But Methali refused that as well. She was so full of joy at her success in the ball that she did not feel cold. They walked for some distance and finally got an old cab and went home. Now she felt that all had ended for Mr. Loisel, was tried and only thought of going back to work the next morning. Once they reach home, Methaldi wants to see herself in the mirror again before she retires for the night. So she removes the wrap and looks herself in shock to realize that there is no necklace round her neck. She utters a cry. Her husband, who is getting ready to go to bed, wonders why she has screamed. I have, I have lost Madame Forrester's necklace, she cries. He is shocked too and they both began to look everywhere in the folds of her skirt, her cloak, her pockets, but could not find it everywhere. Mr. Loisel asked her if she remembers if she had round her neck when she left the palace. She says yes, perhaps she had dropped it on the road or in the cab. Mr. Loisel puts on his clothes again and decides to go back on foot over the whole route. He goes out and Methaldi collapses in her chair without any thought about the coldness of the room. 
Mr. Loisel returned at 7 a.m. Disappointed by his trip, he goes and gives a police complaint and even tries to give an announcement about a reward in the newspaper, but nothing helps. The necklace is not found. Ultimately, Mr. Loisel asked Mathilde to write a letter to her friend to ask her for the time to return the necklace. He asked to write that clasp is broken, so she would have it repaid and returned it. After one week of the despair, they know they have to replace the ornament. Mr. Loisel is so worried by the thought that he looks it if he has grown older by five years. The next day, the Loisel took the box that had contained the necklace to the jewelry shop whose name was written on it. He checked his books and told them that he had not sold any diamond necklace. They continued their search for similar necklace going from one jewelry to another jewelry shop. Both of them suffered regret and gr grief finally. They found a diamond necklace that seemed exactly like the one that was lost. The jeweler who wanted to pay the 40,000 francs, but they bargained with him to give it for the 36 francs. They also asked him to keep it for them till they come back with the money in three days. In case they found the necklace, after they had bought the new one, they would sell it back to him for 34,000 francs. Loisel has 18,000 francs that his father had given him. He planned to borrow the rest of the money. He took loans from different people. From some people, he took money on heavy rates of interest and signed promissory notes. It was as if he was selling away his life for the loans. Finally, he got the new necklace after paying the 36,000 francs to the jewelry shop. Madame Loisel took the necklace to her friend, coldly said, you should have returned it sooner. I might have needed it. She did not open the box. Methaldi was afraid. She would notice that it was not necklace if she found out what she would think. Would she not think that her friend was thief? Such thought came into Methaldi's head and made her nervous. But Madame Forestier just put the box away. In this part of the story, we see a complete change in Madame Loisel. The author points out that she shows sudden heroism. She knew that they incurred a huge debt they had to repay. She was determined to pay it back. They admitted their servants, changed their house, rented a small and cheaper place. Methilde did all the housework herself. She washed the dishes and the clothes. She also began to dress like a common woman. She would bargain to get things at lower prices and save as much money as possible. Her husband also took up the extra work writing accounts and copying manuscripts. The difficulty life lasted for 10 years. And by the end of the period, they had paid off all the loans and the interest on them. Madame Loisel lost all her charm and beauty. She looked old, now, and she even spoke loudly like the common woman. Her hands had become rough and red. The only luxury she gave herself was her thoughts. Sometimes she would sit and think of the beautiful evening in her life when everyone had admired her. What would have happened if she had not lost the necklace? She wondered, how small a thing is needed to make or ruin us? Is the author's comment on Mithilde's changed life? She too realized that. In the final part of the story, Mesopassant presents the unexpected to us. One Sunday, Mathilde goes for the walk and meets Madame Forestier there. She still looks young and charming. Madame Loisel walks up to her and greets her, but Madame Forestier does not immediately recognize her. She changed so much because of the loss of the necklace. Mathilde reminds her that she is her friend and that has had a hard life and that because of you. She adds, Madame Forestier is taken back. Mathilde explains how the necklace was lost and had to be replaced with another for which she and her husband to, had to go for a struggle for 10 years. Madame Forestier is shocked. You say you bought a necklace for the diamonds to replace mine? She asked. She is deeply moved by Mathilde's honesty and the turn of faith in her life. Oh, my poor Mathilde, why my necklace was paced? It was worth at the most of 500 francs. Madame Forestier's words are the surprise ending the story. The necklace which was lost was only an artificial necklace which had been replaced by Mathilde with a necklace of real diamonds.
The story is a charming comment on a young and beautiful lady, Mrs. Methelde Loisel. She is very unhappy that she is born into a middle class family and does not have a fashionable clothes and expensive jewelry. The author makes his ironic comment on her dissatisfaction with her status in life by using an ironic style of writing. Notice the use of words. The writer says, Methelde suffered endlessly because of the feeling of inferiority as if it was a kind of disease or illness. Other words like distress, tortured and despairing regrets all suggest that she thought it was a misfortune not to have all the positions described in her dreams. Later, after the loss of the necklace, there is a change in her. The description of Methelde after the hard life of 10 years tells us that she has become strong, hard and rough. Not only has hair become untidy, her hands are uncaid, rough and even talks loudly, her harshly like the women of the lower classes. From a pretty charming young creature in the first paragraph, she becomes a planned good wife at the end. But the change is also in her way of thinking about life because she no longer dreams of thinking she cannot get. She is honest and frank when she meets her friend Jenny Forrester again. Although they have repaid all the debts and are poor now, Datha suggests that she has become a wiser woman. She does not long or crave for the things beyond her reach. This is also the author's comment on life. He seems to be telling his readers through the story of Mithildi that we should be content and satisfied with what we have. We should live within our means and not desire things we cannot afford. In today's class, we studied about the story necklace. Hope you enjoyed it. In the next session, we will meet with another topic. Till then, goodbye and good luck.